to the message this morning. I entitled this message, very simple title. And I'd like us to be reminded and be refreshed once again of this wonderful message that we have received that has changed our lives. It's a very simple message. I, did, I entitled it, Salvation is a Gift. Hello? Salvation is a Gift. And I'd like us to go through some scriptures that will tell us indeed that every one of us, we enjoy the salvation that we have. It is not something that we have earned. It is not something that we deserve. It is not something that is given us because we are better than the others. It is not something that is given us because somebody paid it for us. I mean, our, uh, I mean, any other person other than Christ. But it is something that we have received because it's a gift. Who among you here wants to receive gifts? Bakit ko ko tiyan amen? Ayaw niyo yata ang gift ha? When it comes to a gift, a gift is something that we don't have to earn. A gift is something that is received freely. Compare that to wages. Wages are something that you receive as a payment for your labor or for something that you have done. That is called wages. Something that you deserve because you, you have done something, you've exerted effort, you've exerted time and effort, and so therefore, you deserve it, because you earned it, and that is what we call wages. Amen? Although this salvation that, uh, that we have received, it's a gift that is free, but it's not cheap. Not all free stuffs are cheap. The, this free salvation that we have received is paid. It is not something that is just, you know, you can pick up anywhere around the corner. This is precious. This is something that you can never find anywhere. And it does not come to us really free in such a way that um, it's, just, it's just very cheap. No. Actually, it's priceless. Because this has cost the life of our Savior Himself. So we, do not, we should not take it for granted Although it's free, isn't it sometimes when they give you something free that you did not earn, you did not really spend time, you did not really uh, labor for it, you just receive it. Sometimes you don't really value that much, something that's free. Well, it depends on where it comes from though. Amen? Hello? Sometimes, <laughs> because it comes from a special someone, although it's very cheap, but it becomes very special to you, hello? Because it comes from a special someone. Hello? Amen? But when it comes to the salvation that we have, brethren, although this is free, it was paid by blood. And it can never be bought anywhere, even wherever you go, even if you go to Pluto or to Mars, you can never find this. And there is no one who can give this free stuff, this salvation, but only one person. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen? This may be 
a very simple message, but I'd like us to be reminded that the salvation we receive is indeed free. But it is something that we need to treasure. It is something that we cannot just take for granted. It is something that should actually cover our whole life. This free salvation should actually change our whole being. This free salvation should actually change the course of our life and should actually direct our vision and change our priorities. It may be free, but it is powerful. That even demons or Satan himself knows that he cannot do anything with it. It's free, but it's high voltage. Hello? It is free, but it can determine your destiny. That without it, there is no hope for you and for me. That's how powerful this free stuff is. This gift can determine whether you will burn for eternity or you will enjoy your life eternally. So it's not something that you have to take for granted. Because you may be hearing it today and taking it for granted. Let me tell you, it will not do you anything good if you take this thing for granted. It's not because it's free that you just put it behind, you know, just receive it and put it aside and don't mind of it anymore. It cannot be that way. This is free, yes. But it must be treasured more than anything that we have ever received or whatever we have. It must be treasured as the most important uh, gift that we have ever received. Whatever properties or whatever belongings that we have, this free stuff that we talk, we talk about should be treasured more than any other thing that you treasure here on earth. More than even your spouse or your children. Can you hear me, man? But many people are taking it for granted because it's just free. But if you do that, you're in dangerous zone. Amen? What is this salvation? This salvation is what Christmas is all about. When we talk of the message of Christmas, actually Christmas all points to this. It points to this salvation that has, that uh, Christ has come to offer us. You can have all these commercialized aspect or part of Christmas, but with, if you don't have the gift in your life, then all you have, brothers and sisters, all we have, if we don't have the gift, is just the stuffs of the world that can never change our destiny anyway. So this is free, and I guess to see in Matt, in, in um, go to, wow, John 3.16, wow, amen, hallelujah, everybody said John 3.16, this wonderful verse that has rang all throughout, it, all the, ever since it was written, brethren has changed many lives until now, this is the uh, signature of God. I mean, this is the heart of the Bible, and 
This is the center of the message of the gospel. To someone who do not see himself needing a savior, this means nothing to him. But you will only appreciate this verse if you see or if we see how doomed we are. That we have no hope because we are all sinners. And if a person doesn't see himself as a sinner, this verse would not mean anything to him. That's the problem. Many people do not think they need Jesus because they don't think they are as bad. We think sometimes that, you know, we're okay. But no one is okay. It is already declared, all have seen. No one is righteous. So let's all read this one. One, two, three, blow. Okay, shut it down, please. Shut it down. Say it again. Very good, children. <laughs> you know what? We should not be. What uh, tayo magpatalo sa mga bata dito sa harap, amen. We should have also our memory verse, especially John three sixteen, amen. But if you really sit down and analyze John three sixteen, the word "world" there speaks of every one of us. For God so loved the world, regardless of who you are. The world includes everyone who has a soul. Everyone whom God has given life. But the life that we have, the physical life, will end someday. But there is this destiny that we all are heading to. And that is hell. Because of the condition of man. Man is totally depraved. There is no way for man to be saved. And that's why Jesus has to come. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That, the reason is that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the message of Christmas. This is the message of the Gospel that needs to be ran out everywhere. Especially this season, every one of us need to speak out the message. Why? Because there is no other way for man to be saved other than this gift. Do you see the situation? If you and I do not speak, how else will people be saved? Acts chapter 4 verse 12, let's just see some verses here. To, to tell you that there's only one way in order for a man to be saved. There's only one way. Everybody read. Salvation is found in no one else. Everybody say no one else. No one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. If we don't speak since we already have the good news, since we already have Christ in us, we have already received the gift, and if we don't speak to people, what will be their hope? So that's why this salvation we have is free, but many people have given their lives in order to share this free gift to others. Until now, many people are dying for this cause. Until now, many servants of God go sleepless, traveling here and there. Whatever the cost, dangers they may face because of this free gift. 
You see, it may be free, but it's not easy. Because people, many times, don't believe it. And when you give this free gift to them, they will even kill you. Hello? It seems just so easy to, okay, hallelujah, it's free gift. But look at all the efforts of men and women whom God has called to go out and give this free gift, share this free gift to others. It takes their whole lives. Many, many, as I said already, have given up their lives, have even died for it already. So it's, we know it's free, but it's not cheap. John 14, verse 6. What does it say? Memory verse? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, there you go again. It again says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Brethren, do you see this situation here? It's just like so many people who are in the dark, they don't know where to go, but you and I know the way, and if we keep quiet, everybody's just lost, trying to find their way. But if you say, no, everybody, this is the way. And that's the situation we are in. It's free, but not everyone knows about it. They think they have to pay something. You talk about uh, Buddhism, you know, the teachings in Buddhism. There are four laws that they have also. I forgot, you know, you know, during in high school, you know. Or, or spiritual loss, like, like spiritual loss of Buddhism, something like that, you know. Uh, we go to Muslim, uh, maybe Islam, they have also their laws. But all of this that other religions have are self-effort in order for them to fulfill, just like in um, um, India, what's the religion of India? <coughs> Hinduism. Hinduism is, they have also this sense of loss that they need to follow so that they are going to, they're hoping for reincarnation. Reincarnation so that at least in once they are reincarnated many, many times, then there will be a time that they will reach that perfection. You know? They are reincarnated, maybe next time you become a Karabal. Other times you become a mosquito, you know? Most of them they become cows, so. Yeah. But all of this we love because we now we know the truth. But actually, we were there for, we were like them before. It's just a different faith. We believe in communion, you know? Then we have to butcher pigs or chicken, mano, manly, and look at their pibis, the vial, to see if it's good. It is the vial to be, will determine whether we have suerte or malas. You know? All these beliefs that we have is just like this, it's just the same. We are all classmates before we were all in the dark. Until such time that we have come to know the truth and the fear that we have towards those, you know, false beliefs that we had before, we are just doing them because we are afraid something bad will happen to us if we don't do them. Now we have to, we have stopped doing them and we have come to know the truth that have set us free. But the sad thing is that many of us are just quiet and enjoy this salvation we have while others are still groping in the dark, trying to find. Some, some, many people actually know in themselves that what they are doing is right according to their assessment. 
But we, as children of God, know that there is a free gift that, can be, that we can receive, that can change them. There is no other way. Amen? In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, let's read 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Because God has made Christ who is perfect. See that? God made Him. Who is that Him? Jesus. Who had no sin. Jesus was sinless. He does not deserve to die. But He was made by God to be sin for us. Meaning He took your sin and my sins. So that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. So the righteousness that we have in, in, in the eyes of God right now is not our own righteousness. It is what we call imputed righteousness, which is given to us because we have come to believe. You will never be pronounced righteous in the eyes of God because we are all sinners. But the moment you believe in Christ, what happens is righteousness is imputed. Everybody say imputed. Meaning to say it is given to you. It is credited to our account. That's the salvation that we have. That's why it's free because we don't have to earn our salvation. And there's no way we can earn it anyway. But it is when we believe in Christ that righteousness is imputed to us. And then we are pronounced righteous in the eyes of God. Because somebody paid for our sins. And if it is already paid, you don't have to pay it again. I keep saying that. If your sins are already paid, you don't have to pay it again. Because the payment for sin is death, and that is hell. That makes all the difference. If Christ did not die, then we should all die because the payment for sin is death. But because Jesus died, everyone who believes in what he did will be saved. Can you hear me now? This is the salvation we're enjoying. And how all this things that we're talking about, it is really free, but how are we going to obtain this? How do we receive this? Okay. It starts with, first, we need to have faith. And faith is not the ability to believe. Because even demons believe. But do you think the demons are saved? Because they have faith? No. What's the difference of the faith that we can say is called saving faith? This faith comes only to us once we start hearing the gospel. Faith comes by hearing. In, in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, this is the only way that people will will have faith. Consequently, everyone reads? Read. Faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. It is a, the word consequently means it's a consequence. Faith is a consequence of hearing the gospel. That's why there is no way for a person to be saved unless he hears the gospel. 
That's why if you read verse 14, I think it's verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe of the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? You see that? That's why there is a need to shout the gospel. That's why every one of us who have already received the good news and who have already enjoyed or are enjoying salvation, every one of us need to shout the truth. And even if they will hate you, it's worth risking. Who knows? But if you are just quiet, there is no way for others to believe also. Because how can they call on the one they have not heard or believed in? And how can they believe of the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone telling them? And who has the news? You and I have the news. We need to speak up. So that this free gift will be received. All of you here are thinking of giving a gift to someone this Christmas. Anybody? Wala kang barak? Are you thinking of giving a gift to someone this Christmas? Red friend, I believe the best gift we can ever give to others is the gift of salvation. That we can share this wonderful news of salvation to others. And I pray that, and I hope, and I'm actually encouraging each one to do this, that before the year ends, do something to share this good news. If you cannot do it, we can partner together. I ask you, if you know someone, tell them if we can have Bible study in their place, in their home, and we will be willing to do that. And we will go and share the good news. Sometimes it takes a group effort to be able to share this good news. You only need to be determined to do it. Amen? It is received by faith. That's why it says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. This is very basic. But I'm telling you, many of us have taken this for granted. That's why I want us to, uh, especially this Christmas, I want to emphasize on this because it is necessary. Everybody read. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, the word grace comes from the word gratis in uh, uh, Greek, which means free. That's why it is by grace that we are saved. Salvation is by grace. It is free. But it must be received through faith. It is like faith is a hand. That even if they are giving you a free stuff, if you don't have a hand, you don't have faith, you cannot receive it. You can't free stuff to people who have no hand. They cannot receive it. Many times we do that. We are giving something free to others, but they cannot receive it because they have no hand. What is that hand? Faith. And that's why we need the Word of God to be given so that faith will come to them. It's no, there's no shortcut for salvation. Faith needs to come to the people. See, again, in Romans 10, 17, consequently, faith comes. It is not incumbent. Incumbent means original already. I mean, that I know. We don't have that. It is free, but it must be received by faith. And that's the, the hard part. Many people do not have faith. And even if they have faith, 
it is the wrong faith. They do not have the saving faith. And it is you and I who have the truth. And it is the truth that we need to share for people to have faith. Somebody say praise the Lord. You see, we have, praise God that we have this faith. Praise God that we have this truth that has set us free. Imagine if you're still in the dark. Imagine if you are not yet saved. It's unthinkable how people are dying everywhere without faith, without salvation. Once we get to heaven, I guess that's the time that we will realize that we are actually very blessed. For now, many of us don't yet see it, that we are actually very blessed. And that's why sometimes you think like, should I go to church or not? Actually, that should not be a question. Should I serve the Lord or not? Actually, that's not supposed to be a question. Because if you think about hell and eternity, that's not a joke. Say to your neighbor, it's not a joke. Amen? Are you listening? May I see your face? Not your alibuspus? Don't show me your... Not your alibuspus? Uyo? Ano yung sa English yun? When I was in high school, there I think we have some I have some classmates who are making fun of sometimes they don't know and they make fun because they don't know. And they are naming parts of the body. And when it came to Hindi niya alam. So, linigo niya. Centerpiece. <laughs> Centerpiece na. <laughs> okay, show me your faces, not your... Okay. I want you to really take this seriously because uh, many of us are taking for granted our salvation. And yet you never, you don't know that once we face death, the most important thing that you have once you face death is actually your salvation. 